view of the vagina, legs wide open, the baby's head like popping, like blood splattered on you, all these fluids. I haven't vlogged in such a long time, this feels so weird. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those who don't know me, hi, my name is Dane. I'm a second year nursing student at Holy Name University and I make videos on YouTube about nursing. So last year I posted a video. It was a video explaining, you know, how I made the decision to move here, what I did to prepare myself for the move, and like my overall experience as a first year student. I got a lot of positive feedbacks on that video. I even had people DMing me on Instagram saying that they saw my video. Long story short, a bunch of them are now my schoolmates. I decided to turn this into like a mini series because I realized that a lot of people were in the same position that I was in and there's not a lot of videos out there that explain what it's like to go to nursing school abroad so I decided to make another video but this time it's gonna be about my second year experience the majority of the things I'll be discussing is the subjects I am here purely for academic reasons and I feel like this video could be really helpful because I'm noticing that a lot of students are deciding to study abroad just because of how high the tuition is in the states like it's so incredibly expensive so without further ado i'm just gonna get right into the topics if you see me looking down it's because i have written down everything on my laptop sorry that's my dog i there's probably like a cat running across the yard or something if i were you i'd grab some snacks you know get some drinks and water and <laughs> watch this video because I got some tea to spill. By the way, let me just say this real quick. My hair is colored right now. It was like an ashy gray, but now it's kind of just like a mix of like blonde, brown, and gray. I, I don't know what color this is, but we are not allowed to have colored hair in the nursing program. The only reason why my hair is like this is because I'm on a pretty long vacation. COVID cut our semester short. Our next school year doesn't begin till August. So I took the opportunity to color my hair. But yeah, normally in the nursing program, you would not be able to have your hair dyed a different color that isn't your natural color so obviously when I go back to school I have to dye it back to black I don't know why that is pretty much the standard with every nursing program here in the Philippines okay so back to talking about second year I want to say that this year went by really quickly but if I'm being honest there were so many events that happened this year made it feel like this year dragged on way too long so I'm really glad that I'm done with second year and heading into third year because I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to bounce after graduation goodbye like you won't see me again just kidding second year for me started on June 2019 and ended on March 2020 but it ended kind of abruptly because of COVID we didn't have a finals week that was our last week of the semester but then the governor declared us to be on lockdown so we obviously didn't we couldn't take final exams our semester got cut short a week so there's that but my first semester was from june up until october and then my second semester was from november to march the focus of nursing school in second year is maternal and child health nursing so anything that has to do with the health of the mother and the health of the baby cover topics from childbearing which is like the process of getting pregnant what happens during pregnancy, the diseases or the illnesses that could occur during pregnancy. We also discuss child rearing, which is the upbringing of a child, normally from like birth up until 18 years old, but you know, we're Filipino, so like it doesn't really stop ever. <laughs> One major event that happened during second year was our capping ceremony. Capping is basically like when you f are fully initiated into the nursing program. You're dressed in your hospital uniform and boys get their badges and the girls get their caps. That basically signifies that we are officially nursing students that are ready for clinical duty. I was looking forward to capping ever since I started this nursing school journey. So when the capping ceremony finally came, I felt really happy that I reached that milestone this year it was kind of sad that my parents weren't there they were able to watch through facetime so shout out to modern technology for that biggest difference between first year and second year is that first year we didn't have any hospital or clinical exposure but second year we did so our subjects for first semester i will put a little screen cap for you guys to take 
um, a look at. So the lecture is the theory portion of our class and the RLE is our clinical. So the way that our schedule is, and I believe it's been like this for a really long time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, those are our RLE days. So instead of coming to school, you would go to the clinical area where you're assigned. Thursdays and Fridays are our classroom days. We have to smush all of our lectures for the whole week into two days. And that's just the way that our schedule is. Our schedule for first year was a little bit more lenient because we had, you know, lecture classes all throughout the week. They were either Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday. Second year, it's only Thursday, Friday. We had super long hours. I'm talking 13 hour school days on Thursday and Friday. It was a struggle. <laughs> our classrooms don't have air conditioning, so it gets especially hot. But you know what? We have to make sacrifices. We kind of just have to endure it. So yeah, Monday through Wednesday, we're at our clinical areas and then Thursday Friday we're on campus so I'm just gonna go down the list and discuss the classes that we took so NCM 104 and NCM 104 RLE which is our community health nursing lecture and lab so for this class um, our clients were whole families instead of just one person. We were assigned to be in Cortez. It was one student nurse per family. Every day of duty, we would go and we would do our assessment. We would take their VP and we would just kind of like converse with them, ask them, you know, if they have any concerns, um, ask them about their hygiene practices. There's a whole like procedure of assessment. Scoring the problems and ranking the problems was a whole process in itself. With those problems, we needed to make a nursing care plan and implement that care plan within the time frame that we were assigned in that area. I was assigned to a really nice family. There was no adult present in that house whenever we were there, so I kind of just merged with my group mates family and we kind of just um, worked together which really worked out for me because I didn't really know Messiah that well I still don't um, but it helped a lot to have you know to have a classmate help me so moving on we have NCM 105 and NCM 105 lab so this is nutrition and diet therapy since this is a lab this was only held on Thursdays and Fridays we basically learned about the food groups what <laughs> What did we learn? <laughs> we basically learned about the foods that should be given to people with specific conditions, about how food can be used as fuel, and like the proper portions. Our final for this class, we even had to like prepare a meal. We had to buy ingredients and we had to like cook it up in the lab and it was like a cooking show, but like we don't know how to cook. But yeah, that's basically nutrition and diet therapy. You kind of get it within the name. And then there's NCM 106, there's pharmacology and pharmacology RLE, which is a really important class. This is where we got introduced to different drugs that we would be administering at the hospital, the 10 patient rights, you know, what you had to do before you administer medication, the different pathways in which medication could be administered. And then for pharmacology RLE, this is the, where we learn how to do injections and we practiced on each other. So we did, we did intramuscular injections in the deltoid and then intradermal injections here which let me tell y'all intradermal injection with saline water stings really bad so I'm really happy that the partner that I chose <laughs> got it right during the first time in her return demonstration because if she didn't get it right I would have had to get poked on the other side and I was already tearing up so it was really funny because a lot of people were like crying, not really crying, but like they were like being dramatic during this. We also learned like the IV calculations, which girl, there isn't a lot of math in nursing, but mixing medications and IV calculations, there's like a lot of math that goes in. It's not that much, but like I just, my mind just doesn't go with math. I had a hard time understanding that. We gotta do our best to learn because you can't mess up preparing medication, you know. Then we also had NCM 107 and NCM 107 RLE, which is care of mother, child, adolescent, well, which is the lecture and the RLE. So this is where we learned about what'll happen during pregnancy, what could happen after pregnancy, um, what could happen to the baby after it's delivered, common pattern of growth for 
children we covered so many topics like it'll be impossible for me to discuss everything but that's a little bit of a preview and you'll see in the screenshot it says well clients which means that when we were assigned in the hospital we were only assigned to patients that had NSD or normal spontaneous deliveries basically had a normal delivery they didn't have any complications patient assignments only consisted of mothers that gave birth vaginally and then for the delivery room exposure uh we needed to have five handles five assists and five ENCs which I think I'll do a separate video about that since it's a pretty lengthy topic in itself but basically with every delivery there are three student nurses one doctor and probably one like PGI or one resident so there's a lot of people <laughs> there's also your CI your CI never leaves you which she shouldn't but basically the assist nurse uh, arranges all the instruments hands them to the doctor and it's always better to hand to have the instrument ready to hand to the doctor than to have him or her ask for it so with assist you're standing right next to the doctor you know full view of the vagina legs wide open the baby's head like pop in like you see everything as assist and then you also have to do the rootkin maneuver to prevent the perineum from tearing so like you you get you in there you you in the action and you'll get like blood splattered on you all these fluids so it's really important that you wear your ppe <laughs> it's disgusting but like it's life that's how life is brought into the world. I really enjoyed doing assist. I thought that I had the most fun with that. There's also the handle nurse, which is the one who takes BP right after the placenta is delivered. The assist mainly helps the doctor. The handle nurse focuses on the well-being of the mother and the ENC nurse focuses on the well-being of the baby. With EMC, you do immediate drying of the baby as soon as it's delivered, take its vital measurements. You're also the one to do injections. So yes, we do inject babies, Hep B and um, vitamin K. The Hep B is to prevent hepatitis B infection and the vitamin K is to prevent them from bleeding out. So there's that on delivery room. But also under this, we were assigned to other areas like under five, family planning, Pedi Award, etc. And then we had NCM 108, which is healthcare ethics, also known as bioethics. We basically just discussed what's moral and what isn't moral, what's ethical, what's unethical in the realm of healthcare. Fit path B is basically our PE class and this was our last PE class that we needed. So I'm officially done with PE. We did a lot of things. We did we did harness, we did basketball, we did swimming. Um yeah PE is not my thing. But PE was the only minor we had for this sem. All of those classes combined amount to 25 units, which is almost double what a full load in the States would be, which means we're really busy. Like, it's super busy. Like, there's, you really have to have good time management in order to not lose your sanity which I kind of have poor time management so I've lost my sanity a couple times which is why I'm so glad second year is finally over moving on to second semester this is our class list it looks a lot shorter but let me tell y'all this sem this past semester was crazy I'm gonna go down the list again we had NCM 109 and NCM 109 RLE which is care of mother child at risk with problems acute and chronic so for first semester it was well patient for second semester it's with problems this is the time where we learned about like more diseases pregnancy induced hypertension gestational diabetes and hemorrhage um, but we covered so much more than that in lecture rle we still were assigned to like head award the ob ward and the delivery room obviously we can't pick and choose our patients we still provided nursing care for them regardless if we learned about their disorder during lecture obviously with nursing not everything can be covered in lectures so we really had to be proactive in our learnings and educate ourselves about our patient's condition especially if we weren't familiar with it our clinical instructors wouldn't assign us a patient that's like super high risk or where the care needs to be super meticulous um, but I did have a patient 
where I had to take his vital signs every hour which that was a new experience for me because usually vital signs are just twice a shift you know every four to six hours but this patient I had to keep coming in to check his blood pressure every hour so there's so many things that lecture can't prepare you for but you have to be prepared or like you have to do some supplemental education on your own so that you know what to say or you know what to do um, and then we also had NCM 110 lecture and lab which is nursing informatics this is basically a class where we learn how nursing informatics improved um, nursing care so like the use of technology to enhance nursing care and then the last are minor classes so we had Jack history Jack Rizal and witness culture Jack history basically about Philippine history Jack Rizal was like the life of Jose Rizal and what he did witness culture which is another class about religion how Christianity was spread in the Philippines so those are the classes that we took for first and second semester of second year in hindsight it looks like it wasn't that much but i was still pretty fatigued from this workload the mental and emotional strain uh clinicals in the hospital took on me this semester was just overall really draining which is why i'm so glad that it's finally over which means that i powered through it and survived it despite how draining it really was if you guys want to know about like my study habits and everything i'll make another video of that because that in itself is yet again a long topic but i will tell you i got really good grades this year um i was really focused on getting back on the dean's list after i was taken off on the dean's list because i slacked off i'm not saying that i'm back on the dean's list but i'm really happy with my grades this past semester in particular for our MCN class my professor had so much belief in me she would look at my outputs and like use them as her own personal reference all of my classmates my batch we all worked really hard this year if you just focus on academics you're going to get burnt out so quickly which is why balance is really important so for this next portion of the video i'll be talking about my social life which i didn't have much of a social life in first year i really noticed myself growing in that aspect this year got brand new classmates i came from bsn 1b and i got moved to bsn 2d with 10 other people from my previous section a majority of the faces that we met were new which brought me a lot closer to my former bsn 1b classmates there are two in particular where oh my god my camera's dead apologize for the change in quality but my camera just died um and i wanted to keep filming i was talking about glenn and chen glenn chen and i we are like the three musketeers we knew each other from bsn 1b but we never really talked up until we got moved together to bsn 2d we do literally everything together we eat together after classes at lunch we eat together at cafes we like to eat <laughs> we always go out to study decide not to go out we always end up like studying at either my house or Chen's apartment or at Glenn's dorm. I miss them a lot. I haven't been able to see them because of quarantine and everything. But before quarantine, we would go out to like cafes, do grocery shopping together and cook dinner at someone's house. Uh, we would have sleepovers, which sounds kind of weird because like you guys are like 20 and y'all still do sleepovers, but it's really fun. We would watch movies. Glenn and Chen are like avid fans of K-dramas. They got me into K-dramas. Hyunbin is my husband. I I really enjoy the times that we spend together because it helps me it really helps me de-stress from like all the pressures of school and i hope that they felt the same way whenever we were together i never really understood how important it was to surround yourself with people that know exactly what you're going through first year i really kind of just kept to myself just floated from group to group um and was friendly with everybody but this was the first year where i really developed genuine connections with the people around me and I could not have asked for a better group of friends and quarantine ends so that I can see them um and also I've gotten really close to Marie she is legit my other brain cell this girl I have no idea 
how we started being close to each other because we were never classmates. She basically had the same background as me. She came from California and she got into the nursing program. We just have very similar backgrounds. It goes again with like surrounding yourself with people who understand you. She helped me a lot. Whenever I miss home, she would like kind of remind me why we're here and like how our sacrifices for the next four years would be so beneficial for our future. We would also go on trips. Marie is like the designated driver. I'm the designated navigator. I would like be on Google Maps. Glenn and Chen, designated passengers. Just sit in the back and chill. As cliche as it sounds, the load really gets lighter if it's shared by others. I don't want to go as far to say as I was depressed in first year because I had no friends. I was definitely a lot more sad in first year even though I didn't really show it. I proved to myself that I was able to balance having a social life while still prioritizing education because I have the grades that show for it. So everything just basically boils down to how you manage your time and who you surround yourself with because if you surround yourself with like toxic people and people that don't take their studies seriously you're going to catch off that energy too fortunately for me my friends are pretty studious as well but when it's time to have fun it's time to have fun but when it's time to study we gotta flip the books we help each other review and everything which um, I couldn't be more thankful for and also I guess another big update for my life is that I started second year with a boyfriend I ended second year single <laughs> I can kind of laugh about it now because six months have passed since the breakup for respect of both parties both me and my ex-boyfriend I'm not gonna go in depth about what happened basically I decided to end things because I was feeling really overwhelmed with everything that I had to deal with it felt like I wasn't in a place to be somebody's girlfriend like i wasn't in a place where i could have given him the time and the attention that he deserved especially since we were long distance and we had like all this time and space in between us i ended things and i've just been focusing on myself that sounds really cliche this is not to say that relationships during college don't work out or that relationships with LDR don't work out. It really just depends on the people. Right now, I'm really happy and content with the way my life is, with the connections that I made, the friends that I made. Um, even though I had lost a relationship, I still don't feel like there were any losses because I know that I did the best I could. I know that he did the best he could and it just, you know, didn't work out. So that's that on that. Um, my family was really upset when they heard um, because I guess they liked him. I liked him a lot too, but you know, it's fine. It's fine. So yeah, I've kind of just been taking these past six months to focus on myself, you know, explore creative different creative outlets. It's been swell. I don't have any regret. The clean breakup, there isn't any malice in between us. Okay guys, so that is it for my second year experience. I hope I was able to share um, something insightful for those that are either going into second year or are still deciding about whether nursing school in the Philippines is worth it. Wherever you are in, in your nursing school journey, I hope that you end up where you're happy. If I didn't discuss something that you really wanted to know just comment down below or shoot me a dm on instagram i'm always on my phone now because of quarantine thank you so much for watching this super long video i'll see you guys in the next one bye